G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Sunday afternoon here in Australia, so obviously sort of Saturday stateside time, and they are having a long weekend, and we can see that the market is, you know, it's moving up, so it's looking promising, but we're going to have a look at a few other things that also kind of show a different side of the picture. But look, hey, in the, in the end, at the moment, the market is up 3.6%, so getting very close to that $1.5 trillion mark again, which, look, is really good because we got down to about $1.1, $1.2 uh, there, so that was pretty low and pretty scary, and hopefully we've found the bottom. BTC dominance, 44%. ETH dominance, look, climbing. Everyone's getting super pumped about Ethereum at the moment, and the gas prices are super low, which is very, very interesting considering that, you know, the market's in a bit of an upwards trend, you know. Maybe the London hard fork and EIP 1559, things like that are going to have some effect. I mean, they're not out just yet, so... Strange times that we're living in at the moment. I mean, look at Bitcoin, 35,000, very nice. Uh, and the thing I'm worried about now is that come Monday morning, we're going to have a sharp projection. Uh, well, not Monday morning, it'll be sort of Tuesday morning, stateside time. We're going to have a sharp projection because there'll be a CME gap formed obviously at the moment because we're up in the last 24 hours and moving up so that's what i'll be watching for come sort of tuesday i'll be very careful investing at the moment uh just you know in the sort of very short term considering we have gone up over the weekend chances are we'll take a dump come uh tuesday morning when the market's open because of the cme gap but look things are looking pretty good but they can be fairly deceptive and that's what we just need to be mindful of but all right look we can see a sea of green here. So what's done well in the last 24 hours? Let's have a look. Oh, Titan swap. Not sure exactly what that is, but 144% in seven days. So again, people are getting excited in the altcoin market at the moment. And look, even I am, I'm hopeful, <laughs> but I'm just still very cautious would be the best way to put it. Uh, Elrond having a nice move, the graph, uh, one of my favorite projects. Aave, one of my favorite projects as well. We can see in the last seven days, I mean, these things are up 40%. So that's pretty good considering where they came from. But yeah, proceed with caution is what I would say. Look, same with Uniswap, nice. Engine coin having a nice move. I mean, things are just looking good all across the board. Has anything not done so well in the last 24 hours? Let's have a look. Not really. I mean, quant, you know, it's lost 1.9%, but basically kind of being stagnant for sort of seven days. Safe moon, yeah, anyway. 1.2% uh, and 9.2%. And then we're into the stable coin. So really, it was basically gains across the board for the top 100. So again, you know, things are looking good, feeling sort of positive. But again, you know, any gain that we kind of make over the weekend is probably going to be lost when the markets open. And again, not Monday, because Monday is a public holiday state side time for July the 4th. So it'll be Tuesday morning. So that'll be, that'll be when we're going to see what happens. You know, will there be a big retracement? You know, it depends how much the market moves. You know, probably looking at at least about a thousand sort of dollars. So for this to drop back to kind of $34,000, $33,000 is what I would expect when the markets open. But look, not all CME gaps close. Most of them, like 95% of them do, but not all of them do. And look, we've got a CME gap that's higher as well. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But what I want to do is have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So we can see we're still ranging in this motion, but this is what I'm finding interesting, is we had this downward resistance. We had the fake out, and it never really used it as support, you know, kind of there, maybe you could say, but that was a whole lot of indecision, rejected by it. Now we broke out, tested it, moved up, came back, tested it, tested it, and now we're moving up again. So that is what has me a little bit excited at the moment. I'm, I'm still not saying that, you know, we're out of this, you know, sort of trend. We could chop sideways for a really long time. This could go on for months, but it is playing out somewhat similar to a Wyckoff accumulation phase, whereas this is the Wyckoff distribution phase. But will the you know accumulation phase be a lot less than what the distribution phase was? Yeah, that really is the interesting question. Now, again, this is looking somewhat kind of promising, but let's go have a look here. Now, this is over the last three months how coins have done. So Bitcoin's down 40% 
over that time. Ethereum is actually starting to gain, but it's had its ups and downs. Uh, BNB still down. ADA, believe it or not, is up 20%. Dogecoin is up 322% in the last three months. That is uh, interesting, but look, that's because it's had its peak sort of back here and then uh, pulled back a bit. So anyone in Dogecoin is doing pretty happy, uh, doing uh, quite all right and is probably pretty happy if they've been in it for long enough. But look, again, you know, DOT 64% down. Uni down 35%. Litecoin down 30%. Link down 40%. Bitcoin, uh, wrap Bitcoin, again, that's pretty much the same, but we can just see a lot of things. Matic, whew, up 200% in the last three months. All right, so the last three months is a bit of a mixed bag. What about just the last month? Down, 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 down. Basically, just about everything in the last month is down. Some buy a lot, some buy not too much. That is why... I'm still a little bit skeptical that we are truly out of the market, you know, out of this kind of downwards trend. Because when you look over here and you see this green, uh, it's easy to get kind of caught up in that. And you think, oh yeah, everything's good and we're, you know, we're on, on the uptrend. According to three months, it's a mixed bag. And according to the last month, it's not. We are still in a confirmed downtrend, so we really need to just be careful with how we're gonna invest our money. Now, again, never financial advice. This is all just my personal opinion, this, but this is what I'm looking at in the charts. So for me, not going too crazy on anything. As I've said, and I'll keep saying it, Bitcoin and Ethereum is really where I'm putting my money at the moment. I really do believe they are long-term holds. Uh, all the other coins, ugh, I'm just you know proceeding with caution because look we can go the month what about seven days seven days it's starting to show something a little bit different so it's really only in the last kind of week or so that things look like they may be improving but that can quickly turn around come Monday morning particularly if the CME gap is caused and then all of a sudden all of a sudden maybe Bitcoin gets up to sort of 36 even thirty seven thousand dollars sorry Tuesday morning before Tuesday morning comes around and it has to shoot way back down to thirty three thirty four thousand dollars then a lot of these gains that you're seeing particularly in the altcoins they just get crushed straight away so yeah proceed with caution all right, now as it's the weekend, there's not a lot of news out there, but I did find a couple of stories that I think, uh, you know, they piqued my interest as well. So hopefully they've piqued yours. All right, Binance, they really seem to be having a lot of troubles at the moment. So Binance's troubles grow as Thailand files criminal complaint and similar warnings by Cayman Islands uh, and the UK and Japan. So we already knew about the UK and we've already also heard about they're having issues over in Canada, in Ontario. They've had to get out of there. And it seems things like this are growing. But I get the feeling, like again, this is some orchestrated FUD. I don't think anything's really going to happen to Binance. I think, you know, they might get a slap on the wrist here and there. And I think they are going to get regulated uh, in all of these countries. They just, yeah, for whatever reason, they aren't there quite yet. I'm sure the process takes a while and there's a whole lot of things that they have to jump through, hoops and hurdles. And again, you know, Binance USA did get Brian Brooks to come work with them, who was part of the SEC, uh, master of the comptroller, I think he was, is what they call it. So I think that is because they are wanting to get regulated. They know they have to, you know, the space is just going to require it. So I think there's all this orchestrated FUD that's going to go on. And again, it's to suppress the prices of everything. Yeah, people are getting a little bit excited with all this green at the moment, but that could be short-lived. And I think this is going to be part of it. Binance is the biggest exchange, bar none. It way out does Coinbase and all the others. You could probably put a number of them together and they still wouldn't equal where Binance is. So really, they are putting pressure on Binance to get regulated and get legit, and I'm sure they're going to do it. And then all of this will suddenly, you know, I think almost everything's going to end almost, you know, at the same time. I think, you know, XRP thing will get sorted. Binance will, you know, get regulated. Or this will be something to drag this out for even longer. It'll really come down to the big players, you know, big institutions, countries, governments, all of that, 
have they got their positions got themselves set before they are going to let crypto really explode so yeah, i wouldn't be surprised if we see some more downward movement or at the very least just traveling sideways for quite some time but again i don't think binance is going anywhere i don't think this is the end for them i just think they're going to have hurdles put in their way because again all the really big players around the world and that they want to slow this down get themselves set make sure they've built all the infrastructure and everything that they need before they're going to let this new financial system run and then it's really going to explode so for me i'm happy if that happens i, I, I truly am if bitcoin kind of travels sideways for the next say maybe six months great and even if it goes down like don't get me wrong i don't want it to go down i'm not going to love that but i am going to continue to buy it i'll be all over bitcoin until it gets to sixty-four thousand dollars. Once it gets to sixty-four thousand dollars again, then I'm going to start to pull back how much money I put into Bitcoin. And once we're at sixty-four thousand dollars, that's really when I'll be going much heavier into the altcoins because that means Bitcoin is breaking old all-time highs. Don't get me wrong; I'll put some money into altcoins when I see, excuse me, a trend change, which we could be seeing the start of now. But really, once Bitcoin is going into price territory, price discovery, sorry, that's when I'm going to be like, right, yeah, time to ease back on Bitcoin just a little bit and still always dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin, but I'll really be focusing on the altcoins at that stage, heavily into the altcoins because I know I've already, you know, you've once something's in price discovery, you've generally probably missed most of the gains. I'm not saying you can't have great gains after that, but you just never know when that's going to turn, turn around and have a big correction. So you want to preempt these things. So when Bitcoin's in price territory, focus on alts. When alts go into, you know, price, you know, price discovery, sorry. Uh, you know, when they're at all time highs, that's when you want to start taking some of those profits and maybe putting them back into Bitcoin or stable coins or whatever you want to do. And again, that's not financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. I think that's generally the smart way to do it. But it's easier said than done, you know. When something gets into, you know, price discovery, it could still go, you know, another five to ten x from there. Ten x would be, you know, one hell of a thing. But you know, four to five x from its old all time highs, um, pretty kind of regular in crypto. So that's the hard part: is when do I start taking? And I can't tell you when to do that. You got to work it out for yourself. But Binance, I think this will drag on for a while, and then I, again, I get the feeling all the problems that are going on in crypto are generally going to start to disappear very within a short amount of time frame it's not going to be the exact day it's not like you're going to come right here monday morning binance is out of trouble and xrp things settled uh, it's going to drag on and if they really want to drag it on for a while xrp will get settled first then it'll be binance that'll drag on again until all the big players are set that is my sort of conspiracy theory that's what i think is going to happen but we'll wait and see all right moving on so new bill to ban crypto payments in iran but they're going to support mining and reg regulate exchanges so urged by the growing popularity of cryptocurrencies iranian lawmakers have prepared new legislation to introduce comprehensive rules for the expanding industry while the bill effectively bans crypto payments, so it's just payments in the country, it aims to support cryptocurrency mining and regulate the exchange market. So they just want to make sure that when these thing, when anything's being paid for, it's going to be paid for in their money. So you can invest in cryptocurrencies, you just can't use them to go to the shops and buy stuff. They want you to change back into their dollars. And that's how they keep their economy going. And look, in all fairness, I'm sort of fine with that. It just means that for a brief period of time, and again, that this is where they're going to get you. It's going to be about the taxes and all the rest of it. It won't matter if their national dollar or whatever is doing really, really shit, and it'll be the same with the US dollar. It won't matter if it's doing really, really shit. You have your money in cryptocurrencies to make all the profits, and when you're ready to go actually buy something, you change it into that dollar, and the dollar's unlikely to drop that much overnight. Not impossible. Crazier things have happened, but you're going to change it. You're going to have to pay the uh, the tax on that. Then you go and buy whatever you want. So that is how I see the market worldwide. This is how I think it's going to go uh, moving forward. You're probably not going to be able to buy things with cryptocurrencies. They are going to be investment sort of vehicles, and you are going to have to change when you want to physically buy something 
into whatever it is. You know, if you're in Great Britain, you know, the pound or, you know, the US dollar or, you know, the ruble, you know, wherever it is that you are, you know, Australia, the Australian dollar. And that's where they're going to get all the, the taxes and the profits and things like that is they will force you to swap out from your cryptocurrency into the local, you know, denominator, whatever it is, whatever money. And that's when they tax you. That'll be a taxable event. Then you buy something, you're also paying, you know, whatever the tax is on that as well. And that is how I see things moving forwards from here. I don't think, you know, the cryptocurrencies, we need to get rid of this. Really, there's going to be no cryptocurrencies other than stable coins. They are going to be considered true currencies. I don't think you're going to see anything else. They are going to be considered investments. So just crypto, which is what I like to call them because there's hardly any cryptocurrencies. Very few of them are. They're generally a, a, a token, not a currency. So that is, again, that's how I see things moving forwards. All right, last but not least, this is interesting. So a new report places the United States at top of crypto-ready countries. Yet we hear all this fud about the regulation and this and that's going to happen. But yet this is what's going on. The United States is the world's most crypto-ready country, according to new research published, uh, published on crypto education platform CryptoHead. Now again, take it with a grain of salt because they're all about crypto. So they're going to be you know, generally crypto favorable in anything that they put forward. CryptoHead's 2021 Crypto Ready Index considered the number of crypto ATMs in each country and their accessibility, the leg uh, legality of crypto and whether banks can use it and the number of online searches for crypto related terms calculating a Crypto Ready Index for 200 countries and territories. The United States ranked first with a Crypto Ready score of 7.13 out of 10. Cyprus ranked second and Singapore third, both scoring under 6.5. So again, we see all these stuff going on, you know, they're going to, you know, they are going to regulate it. We all know that, but it makes it sound like they're going to heavy regulate it. And that is definitely a possibility. I just think it's unlikely because they want to change as well. They understand that things need to change and the old system doesn't die. If they regulate it, regulate it sorry, similar to how you run uh, uh, Iran is doing it, that you can have your cryptos and they can make as much money as in the world, but when you want to buy something, you will change into the local currency. And that's where they're going to get you. That's going to be a taxable event. Then you've got the, you know, the Aussie dollar or the US dollar and go and buy whatever you are. There's taxes that go on top of when you buy something. So they are going to make a fortune and that is how the dollar is going to survive and it won't go anywhere. They won't really be able to print it into oblivion as they say. They can definitely you know devalue it but if everyone's basically investing in cryptocurrencies and you know stocks and you know still all the rest of it but then they are forced to change into the local currency to then buy sell anything and all the rest of it like you sell something they won't let you sell it for cryptocurrencies you will have to sell it for the local currency and then that currency from there can be turned into crypto, real estate, whatever you want. And it's all taxable events and that is how the dollar does not die. And that is what I see coming for the entire world. Hence why I don't see the US dollar losing its place as the, you know, sort of the number one currency used around the world. I'm not saying it, that means it lasts forever, but I don't think it's gonna die. All right, a little bit of, you know, sort of tinfoil hat stuff there, but look, obviously, you know, the information's there and it generally does lead towards that kind of stuff and you're seeing some of it already. Now, whether you agree with me or not, I'd love to know down below. Do you think that that's the way crypto moves forwards is they will allow everyone to invest in them, but you will not be able to buy anything with them. You will be forced to change into the local currency to buy and sell goods and to then reinvest that money back into crypto hence making, you know, taxable events every single time. Love to know your thoughts down below. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train at the moment. Things are looking good, but let's proceed with caution. And I'll see you next time.